della Bianchi Campagnolo, Michelotto della Bianchi Campagnolo, Rodriguez Bianchi Campagnolo, firma Conati, neoprofessionista, firma Simonzi, campione d'Italia, Ritter della Bianchi Campagnolo, Caldo, Attenzione Simondi, posa col quadro del pittore Vincenzo Napoli che verrà consegnato al giornalista Sconcerti. Ibene, Cassa, Ecco, Guarazzini, Pinelli da Carmignano, Gilson, il lussemburghese della Rocado, Grande della Cassa. Diamo la firma ragazzi. Ecco Iosta Peterson, Marchetti, quello di prima era Giuliani. The second day in the Dolomites, the penultimate day of the race. The lap is 210 kilometers long and is routed over four passes. From here, the goal is 110 kilometers away. The Spaniard, Lascano, breaks out. And right after him, Parasato and Fuente. The trio quickly draws out ahead. But the field puts on speed. The Spanish offensive was expected, but not so early in the day. Up front, the situation is changed. Puente has gone on alone in the lead. He has a 50 meters lead on Farisato. Having initiated the breakout for his countrymen, Lascano has fallen back. The field is led, as usual, by Max's men. Here it's Schoenmacher and Van Schill. Fuente continues his solo with determination under the watchful eye of the TV camera. He looks back. Well, he made a good start. And the one-man show can go on. But isn't he taking a big risk? Isn't it far too early to go off on his own? Hasn't he learnt that he shouldn't bargain with his resources and his temperament? Fuente is barely two minutes ahead of the field when he descends from the first pass. The question is whether he can maintain his lead on the way down. Normally, Fuente is not a striking downhiller. He usually loses on the round and downs what he gained on the ascents. It's important for him to reach the next climb with a fairly comfortable lead. The field is on its way down, hunting the fugitive. After the first pass, the field is still together. Down in the valley, Fuente keeps his lead, and now it's soon time to climb again. Half a minute after in the field, led by Schoenmacher. And here, a few kilometers farther on, in a town at the foot of the mountain, Colle San Lucia, the field starts out on the climb, goes into the first hairpin bend. A few coils farther up, Fuente has got into his gliding, climbing thrusts and is beginning to increase the distance from the field below, which is still intact. Now it's Hussman's turn as the pacemaker. The pace set by the Belgian is making its mark. Soon the weeding out begins. 
the elimination. Fuente thrust on steadily, apparently without effort, in a very high gear. That's how he takes a bend, without losing his beat. And there's Farasato, who helped in beginning the breakout, still placed between Fuente and the field, riding unexpectedly well, two miles from Colle San Lucia. But it's a long way home for a little man alone in a mountain trip. 60 kilometers to go, with pass altitudes of nearly 2,000 meters. He has a lead of a good couple of minutes. Husmans is still pulling his weight, followed by Merckx, Batalin, Pesaradona, Gimondi, Panizza, Lascano. The strong men have taken their positions up front, but Fuente shows no signs of weakening. Is this crazy and magnificent project of his really going to succeed? Or is he going to pay the terrible price for his foolhardiness? Fuente's mad, the others say. At any rate, he's the anarchist among them. Once more, he's exploded the field. The field is scattered now at the point where the road turns up towards Paso Jao, altitude 2,240 meters. A group of 12 or 13 men has gone on forward. Merckx himself is leading the chase after Fuente. All the well-known names are here in this group. The cars are dealt for an exciting steeplechase on the 10 kilometers of dirt road up to Paso Jao. Number 18, Ole Ritter, is in the group, as well as number 107, Kuiper, and number 31, Zilioli, and of course, Gimondi and Batalin. There are also a couple of Spaniards. The gradient is very stiff. Riders might just as well get off and walk. The group decreases steadily in size. Ritter still up front. Higher up and nearer the pass, still one man on his own. Fuente holding the lead. The Merx group is still some two minutes behind him. Fuente seems amazingly fresh. Merx, Batalin. Gimondi. Spaniard and Ritter. Now they're overtaking Farisato. The old game on the hill. Here we have the Giants, an exclusive group. And who are the members? Who is together with whom? We note the hierarchic order. Look at the order of march, the times, and the riders' condition at this point. Here is the winner in 71, Gusta Pettersson together with Moser and Poggiali. Followed by Van Schill and Canotti. Farther back, one of the Spanish mountain hawks, Goldos. And Mota, winner of the Giro in 1966. 20 minutes later, on the final gradient of the day, 25 kilometers from the finish, some of the stragglers have come up to the Merckx group, who are now running three minutes behind Fuente. There's someone piling it on in the background. It's Francesco Mosa, and Ole Ritter keeps him company, acting as observer for Gimondi. Ritter is quick to get moving in high gear and gets onto Mosa's rear wheel. 
The surprise maneuver has succeeded. The two companions have broken away. Moses started it, and it's his job to keep pulling. Ritter stays on his rear wheel. It's a tactical position for him. Moser is Jimondi's rival. Moser and Ritter close up on Fuente, the mountain town of Oronzo. Here, Fuente crosses the line after 105 kilometers of solo riding. And barely a minute later, Moser and Ritter in that order. So Jose Manuel Fuente finally succeeded. At last, he lived up to his reputation as the successor to his countrymen, Bahamontes. El Rey de las Montañas, the King of the Mountains. In spite of his job of protecting Jamondi's position, Ole Ritter has now advanced to seventh place in the race. 